the new strategy kind of lines up, like um, like prepping the second call for kind of the pitch review? Yeah. You know I mean, has anything changed with that? Well, that's worked, that worked out great. I mean, the last three or four loans I got in processing, uh-huh. that's exactly how I did it, and it went super smooth. Like, okay. cool. I basically set it up because, like, you, you knew how I was doing it before. I was like, hey, I'm going to call you at 6 o'clock with options. Great. You, know, you got a pen and paper. Uh, option one. Most right. amount of cost, you know, what I mean? right, right. and you told me like you're just you're just setting yourself up for failure, you know. They, right. they, everything after that, they don't even want to hear. So cool. the last, so you switched up the verbiage and yeah, kind of like the wordplay and yep. They're still trying to get smooth with it, but I mean, basically, it was like, hey, no problem. I would say, okay, great, I have everything I need. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just you know send out those disclosures to you for review, mm-hmm. so you have all the numbers, you make the decision on your own. Um, most likely, I'll have that out to you by six o'clock. Would that be a good time that I can just get your consent to release the information? Nice. And then we're, oh yeah, great. And they're like, their guards totally down. Cool. I don't have to talk to this guy. I'm yeah. gonna get all the information on my own. I'll make the decision. You know. And How have you noticed the the technique and the delivery from, you know, kind of changing is is switching up and saying, hey, this is an idea. You know, I just want to get your feedback on it. Have you tried that part? I have. Yeah. Okay. So usually when I call them, because most of the time they're like, hey, I want the lowest rate. I'm not taking cash out. Sure. And then obviously we look at, oh crap, there's a whole bunch of benefit with taking cash. So I'm like, so when I call them back, hey, you know, and I, I make sure too, hey, you know, if you're married, hey, are you guys both going to be there to consent? Because yes. I never did that before. I always right. just pitch one of them and then, hey, that sounds great, but let me talk to yeah. my wife. And it's <laughs> like, yeah. I'm going with my other lender, you know? Yeah. Finger, <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. So that's worked out great. And then basically when I'm, uh, so okay, great, hey, I'm, I'm just hitting the button to send out the disclosures. But you know, really quickly, I had a, had a quick idea because I just saw something I didn't I didn't catch before. It's on the credit report. Nice. I see something kind of like, oh, what's on the credit report? Like, oh, yeah. crap, is it something negative, you know? Yeah. And then I go into that, hey, you know, here's what we're looking at. Hey, you know, what interest rate do you have on these credit cards? And yeah. And then it all of a sudden becomes a cash out and, you know, we're giving them cash when they didn't want it. Mm-hmm. The rate's a little bit higher than what we even kind of wanted to, to talk about. Than the what payment. they asked for. And right. they're excited because we're just going over payment, you know? Right. And you just yeah. keep hitting them with the payment. Yeah. And I've had two times where they called me back. I'm like, wait a minute. You still didn't give me the rate. Oh, it's whatever yeah. it is, 4.875. Okay, cool. That sounds great. Yeah. You know? So yeah. that helps out a lot. It does. The challenge now for me is getting those people. That's I have Regardless of the source, whether it's um, inbound, outbound, dialer, or or your own personal outbound follow-ups, right? You're looking for about ten different contacts, mm. and of these contacts, your they're all new. Every single one is new, and a contact can be an email. Uh, well, if you do a contact on one file, it should be an email, voicemail, and also text. So always get in the habit of doing all those three things. Okay. And every single one aligns back to, to one another. And it's mainly pointing back to the email. Okay. So right now what we have is we have like this little cool report, right? People like cool report. Um, I used to say it was neat, right? Because it kind of just pops out. It's like, oh, it's a real neat report. And, um, and that's the property profile report. It's yeah. just a click away in, in BD. And, but see where some agents can open their dialogue or their conversation and say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and email your report. That's actually going to be the whole purpose of my contact. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this is would be highly effective on outbound calls. Mm-hmm. And what what we do is like let's just say you're the prospect, and this is the area, right? Like, hey, Jeremiah, my name is Daniel with New American Funding. We're doing a courtesy update for all the homeowners that we've worked with or co- been in contact with in Orange County, and I can get all this information right off BV. Right? Yeah. Um, And what we're doing is we're just updating you about the new changes that have happened with the 2018 tax reform um, uh, uh, changes that have been rolled out and how you may be able to benefit from this. Okay. And so what what I've done is I've actually sent out an email. I don't think you got it. I never got a response back. So I'm going to confirm your email is still accurate. And then they'll confirm. The reason why they'll confirm is because it's already on its way. We already tried to send it to them, yeah. and then we've addressed that. We've talked to them before. We worked with them before, right? So it's it's very vague, very open. But the approach is is that hey, we've already sent it to you. Um, we never got a response back though, and we just want to make sure you got it because these updates just rolled out this year. And in case you miss it, then you may be limiting your options to improve your existing term. Does that make sense? So it's just it's more of, of kind of an attitude like, hey, whether you choose to use it or not, we just never got confirmation that you received it, and so it's less um, 
it's less salesy, right? And so they can't really turn that down. A lot of times they're going to say, no, nope, I don't think I got it. Go ahead and resend it to me again. And say, okay, cool. Well, I got you on the phone, actually. I can go ahead and update the information so it's a little bit more tailor fit for you. And so that way, the information you pull up is going to be worth your time in reviewing. And the reason why we're updating you and then go about like random, random fun facts, right? And say, hey, the reason why we're updating you is because this courtesy report actually shows you what influences your property value. Like there's this cool report system about your school district. It's super neat. If you have kids in the household, you definitely want to know this information because it's about their schools. And this is important, right? This triggers parents in a different way. Now you've added 10 times more value to that report. Yeah. And say besides the school report, though, it's actually going to show you what the, uh, the houses within your area actually sold for. So if you ever question what that house sold for, now you know. Cool. Even more value, right? Because like, oh, yeah, I remember that open house. I want to know what it sold for. That's all my wife talks about. And so, and so now it's become double value. And so, you know what, I never got a response back and all this new information, I just want to make sure you got it, right? So when I send it out to you, I'm going to adapt it a little bit more closer to numbers you understand. And it looks like, and you can pull up the loan tab on that, on that report, right? Yep. And see, um, you know, it looks like your past loan you did was back in 2016. What's the balance today? I'll go and fine tune it for you. Got it. The balance is about 250. Okay. Any open revolving debt, like credit cards or equity lines now? And they're going to say yes or no, right? And whenever they say, yeah, you're just going to say just a rough estimate, right? This is less inquisitive, right? It's like, all we're doing is just making a quick note. If they say, well, hey, what's, what, what's the whole purpose of that? Well, these different options about tax reform, it's going to show you all available options. So it's pretty neat. Watch. Check it out. So confirm how much you write. So you're always building the hype of that report. Mm -hmm. Say, yeah, watch. I'll show you. Well, how much in total credit card debt yeah. do you owe, right? It's like, well, Daniel, what, what, is, what is the purpose? Of that? I owe about 12 grand. I don't know why that's relevant. Oh, yeah, no worries. I'm going to show you. So how much do you pay on that total credit card debt? Right, yeah. and you're just moving right back. Say, yeah, I'm going to show you. And sometimes they might be fighting you off. They might be fighting you back, and say, no worries. I'll send you what I have right now. Please confirm your email, and I'll stand by until I release it. Right, and then you open up the dialogue, but that gives you a cue that he's not the right person to talk to. Yeah. And so now you're pulling up the information and saying, well, what does the wife do? Right now, I'm going to get in contact with the wife under the basis of saying, hey, I just talked to Jim. Looks like he was busy. He asked me to give you a call. <laughs> right. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Now you're moving right in. Okay. Is that you know what I was conversing with him and he told me that you guys have about twelve to fifteen grand in credit card debt. Now you're moving right into the conversation. She's kind of off guard, but at the same time she's addressing because you're talking to her. Yeah. And say you know what it's from the sounds of it, it's it sounded like you actually handled the bills in the house. So this is what I'm doing. I'm actually sending you guys this real cool report. We've talked to you guys in the past, right? And so you're kind of building up that hype. But at the end of the day, your your first your first motive is to find out the need. Like what's what's a lead type or or a scenario that you're having most issue with up front? Yeah, I guess more of it would be like, hey, look, I got a first mortgage. So I want to have that. I've got it. Great, no problem. I have that. I I don't argue with them anymore. Absolutely, no problem. I can. I what's the intent of the engagement? Uh, the engagement is they want to take cash out, um, specifically line of credit to either most likely upgrade their home. A lot of times, they want to start upgrading for summer Good. things like that. Get a pool, whatever it is. Okay, yeah. so. So when is it discussed that that it's better for them to do just one single loan? Um, so I bring it up so I get all the information. Great. Just, okay, no problem. What's the equity? What's your credit? And when everything looks like it's kind of dialed in, we're like, shoot, they're probably going to want to go towards a line of credit. That's where I start going, hey, you know what? I don't know if you're familiar. Have you heard about the, the tax reforms that changed in 2018 about lines of credit? No, I haven't. So I start going into, hey, they're no longer tax deductible. Also, a lot of my clients have actually been switching recently to just one mortgage because they can write it off and nice. they have one payment to worry about versus two. Okay. You know, doesn't it make sense to have one payment versus two large payments? Right. That's how I kind of pitch it, you know? Yeah. Like, well, okay, well, yeah, but, but what, what's your line of credit? You know, what's your what's yeah. your rate and that kind of thing. So. Okay, cool. So, and you're doing this on the first call or the second call? This would be the first call. Okay. Yeah. Save that probably for the second. Okay. And that's the idea. Okay. Right, and so when you go over the benefits and, and you circle back and leverage and say, here, here's the upside is that it's not an adjustable rate, it's not according to the prime, the prime is actually moving up, expected to increase continuously, mm -hmm. revolves just like a credit card, and you can't even write off the interest. Okay, right, so that's I mean, technically, that's the upside, but the idea is that doing it all in one loan, okay, right, with tremendous upside. Okay. And so, and so, ideally, but when do you tell them that it's a fixed loan versus equity loan, right? You you tell them by basing it off the payment, mm -hmm. and saying your total payment's gonna be this and that, uh, compared to here. And then they're gonna say, well, is that the equity line payment? No, that's your total payment. 
let them assume, right? But when they digest the benefit and they experience it, and it's important how you set up that, that second call. Because if, let's use the example of them just wanting to do cash out for home improvements, right? So if I told you and I'm the prospect and I said, you know, hey, I need about, I need about 50 grand in, in credit card, or I'm sorry, in, in, uh, on, a cash, on a cash in hand, a limited of 50,000, what do you ask me? Okay, yeah, absolutely. So what was that going towards? Are you using that for home improvement? It's going to be for home improvements. Okay, great. What are you looking to do with the home? Doing the master bathroom in the master kitchen. Oh, fantastic. Okay, awesome. Okay, and how much do you think you need for each one of those to accomplish this? Planned cash? it out about 40000 for the kitchen and then 10000 for the master bathroom. Oh, awesome. That sounds pretty accurate. So have you had quotes for these already? We have. Oh, perfect. Okay. How quickly are we looking to get this done once we have the cash? Um, I'm looking probably pull the trigger within three months. Okay, perfect. Okay, well, you know, it sounds like we have a perfect program for you that allows to get that cash within that time frame. So let's let's take a look and see what we can do. Okay. And I go right into like, great, so who's going to be primary or... You know, I start kind of trying to go into the application. Okay. Yeah. So add these questions in. Okay. Um, when we immediately know that it's for home improvements, say, you know, um, never want to elude that we have a program. Don't want to okay. don't want to perk up. The tonality cannot be salesy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, uh, right. Could we change our demeanor changes because now it's like, yes, I got them. Yeah. And sometimes we don't. We, it's unknowing. We we don't know that we're doing it. And I'm not saying that you're doing it, but just pay mind to that yeah so if they if they ask you for for a uh, cash out and they say hey i'm you know i'm looking to do improvements on the house say okay the condition of the house right now is there are you in the midst of any construction or any improvements now and uh, a lot of times they'll say no and say on a, on a scale of one through ten with ten being ideally perfect okay. how do you rate your home today okay and he's going to base it on today and then, um, you know, the immediate follow up and say, like, most of the time they'll say about six or seven and say, and your response would be something like, um, okay, cool. So after the improvements of the master bathroom and the master kitchen, what would you rate it then? And then they're going to say, oh, this is going to be perfect 10. It's going to, it's going to be beautiful, you know, and then, and then they're experiencing it and they're living it. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, if we just ask them basic question, oh, okay, you got quotes already. Yeah. But it's just the process still. There's no emotional tie yeah. to the result. Right. Okay. And ultimately, what we're doing is selling the result. That's what we need them to digest at the end. Yeah, is the result, um, and then we can we can tell them about the logistics after they've kind of experienced that. And so, why that's helpful is because it, you're also going to come across people who are just looking for a rate and term refinance. This mm -hmm. is going to be very common too, and they're going to be late, and they're going to say, "Hey, I, I saw an ad for like three point seven five. Do you guys have anything that can beat that?" I say, "Yeah, absolutely. Let me go and send it over to you." It's going to go to your Gmail account. Okay, cool. So let me go and update it real quick. Just make sure it's worth your time in reviewing. The, it's going to go for your primary residence and go into it, right? Mm -hmm. And then I say, yeah, you know what? Um, I'm just looking for a rate and term refinance. I don't, you know, uh, can you beat my 3.75? Yeah, no worries. So the, uh, the, you know, figure out the equity position, ask a few basic questions. But what you're getting at is, is getting back to that question of right now, are you in the midst of any improvements or any construction on the home? Mm -hmm. um, and then they'll they'll say no. They'll say okay, on a scale of one through ten, ten being your ideal perfection, right? Ideally perfect to you based on your your plans with the house. If it's retiring here or living here in the interim and selling it, what what would you rate the condition today? And then the, um, they'll say probably about a seven. They'll say what do you think you could do to the home to make it a ten, right? Um, hopefully you already know if they plan to retire there or if they plan to sell it. If they plan to sell it, then the goal is to increase their equity return when they sell the home. Yeah. If, they're, if their plan is to retire there, then, they're, then, then their goal is to get the improvements done before they retire, mm -hmm. right? Leverage equity and just get it done, experience it now. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And when you ask them about the rating, they're thinking about their house mm -hmm. psychologically, right? Yeah. You're like, imagine your condo. If I ask you to rate it on scale one to 10, you're thinking about it and you're comparing it to things that you've seen. Yeah. And so, so that that throws them in this position where they're now they're now going to answer all of the of the projects that they've been holding off on and say, "Oh, well, I guess I could do the backyard," right? Mm -hmm. They've been they know that they've been holding on to it. Um, this is something they haven't done, but it's been in their mind. They say, "You know what? I, I could probably use new siding, new, you know, blah blah blah." And then um, and then you say, "Okay, cool. How much do you think that'll run? Like how much would that cost you?" 
And sometimes they'll say about, about three grand, five grand. And so now you're like, oh, damn, this guy's not going to buy it, right? Yeah. So, okay, cool. So outside of that, is there any revolving debt right currently right now? And sometimes they'll say no. Um, if you look at their current loan at a 30-year term, talk, then think about shortening the life of the loan. So then I would move on, to, but I'm not going to say it, say, hey, I could shorten the life of your loan. What I'm going to ask them is say, you know, okay, based on your last refinance, it looks like you've got about 28 years left now. Are you, you plan on working for another 28 years or are you going to retire before then? Mm. Right? Okay. And they're most likely going to say, well, I'm, I'm Sonny, I'm, you know, I'm 58 years old, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm 50 years old. I'm going to be 75 by that time. Say, okay, no worries. If I can show you how to pay this off sooner, would that be something that you'd be interested in? And usually that's how it comes out. So... What happens is what those questions, when we funnel them, we, we also alternatively find out that they have no debt. They have assets. They have got good credit. They got a good equity. And typically what I find with these smart, responsible people is that they, they, um, they, uh, they like plans, right? And so if they had no other debt <coughs> and they're putting their cash just into savings, we have to consider our own experience with savings and say, hey, you know what? My bank only gives me about a quarter, like 25 basis points on my balance. Mm. You know, is your, I would imagine you're probably only getting 25 basis points on this extra cash flow. So instead, what my clients have found is that by putting it back in the equity in their home or actually paying down their principal, they're achieving two things. They're getting a higher return naturally because the equity position of your house is growing more than 25 basis points a year. But you are also paying down your balance on your mortgage to retire sooner. And so ultimately, before your income gets fixed and before it declines, what I'd like to show you is how to get the house paid off so by the time you get into fixed income, you don't even have a mortgage payment to worry about. Now that's retirement, right? So if you're earning this income now, the last thing you want to do is set yourself up. Now the dream, the destination is retirement. Yeah. So we kind of just flip the script where sometimes if we just solely focus on cash out and debt consolidation, we overlook these things. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it's really good. Yeah. Cool. That helps out a lot with that. Okay. Yeah. So that'll help me with the with the cue calls, I think, for sure. Yeah. Trying to get something out of that. Okay. Yep. And then uh, as far as what I'm trying to do with more outbounding, because obviously it's a little bit slower with the calls. I can't control sure. calls coming in. Mm -hmm. um, I've been focusing on what I did. The first thing I did was I went to um, basically all loans funded, and I, um, uh, what's it called? I screened it by agents. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I went through like each agent I can think of and, and as far as looking to see if they were departed. Mm -hmm. And they went to the home website and you can actually type it in and see if they're still with the company. Sure. I talked to uh, Anthony, so that's pretty accurate. So you kind of go off of that. Okay. So then I made a list of like, okay, I found like 20 uh, past client or em employees that are no longer here. Okay. And then basically just went with their names, searched there all funded and just started going through them. And uh, with me not having full access, it takes a little while to kind of go back and forth, make sure there's no additional loans that funded by that loan to now. Okay. Um, but I've been going through that and just kind of going through as many switching it, you know, me yeah. in, in my name and I'm doing the switches first. Dissect it. Um, okay. instead of being doing big batches cause that's eating up your time. Right. Yeah. And then you get lost in this process. Mm -hmm. you, it almost becomes like, um, like just systematic. Yeah. So all you're looking for is just 10 new connections every day. Okay. Right. And so if you get of this lead base now, now you become selective. You're not as flexible, so you're not looking for any any loan that could be possibly a loan in nine years, right? Yeah. It's a little bit more accurate in saying, so for example, it, of this 9,000 leads that I have access to, I'm really only looking for today. So today I need 10. Okay. And of this 10, I'm not going to put anything in there. I'm going to put 10 that hopefully I could flip within the next 24 to 48 hours or likelihood of me flipping, right? Yeah. Okay. And so now the question is, well, what's that ideal 10? Yeah. And so the ideal 10 is, is um, right now, specifically, anything that's VA. Yeah. Because they love cash gotcha. and debt, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I don't mean that as a bad thing. I'm just saying I noticed that. This mm -hmm. is just from our own kind of research. I could say the same thing about FHA, right? And meaning that if I adapt and figure out who was using it most, it was typically the younger crowd or those coming from the uh, the decline in the market mm -hmm. right so now i'm taking other things in consideration i'm looking at their age group okay and so if i'm if i if i know that the reason why they're they were on an fha if i look at their declaration i see that they did have a foreclosure or bankruptcy i will i will reference that and say well the last thing we want to happen is 2007 we don't want to enter in that so i could show you how to get away from that okay does that make sense now it's a little bit more more reason to give them a call okay um 
But why FHA is because whether you could do a full doc FHA, rate and term refinance, or you can put them on a first and second or just a first loan and do a split MI, meaning that the borrower pays half, we pay half. Mm. And so now the MI comes very small. Okay, and we do that, okay. And the motive is to get them into a conventional before the conventional becomes too high in regards to, you know, in regards to interest rate. Okay. And so um, now I have two resources, right? So I'm going to focus on government loans because I know I can get juice. I can, I know that I have an advantage because of my brand, yeah. right? And I know I have reason. And so if you were a veteran, I'd say, hey, you know what? We're doing a focus within all of the veterans that we've helped within your area. And we want to make sure you're also plugged in as well. So I'm sending out a notice, this is real neat report based on your property value and showing you the changes that you now may be entitled to, right? Okay. Okay. And ultimately what you're doing is showing them the increase in property value, but when they agree to get this report, you open the dialogue to find out if that's an option, right? And so you will, and then you'll go through the funnel question and say, hey, you know what, before I send it out to you, you know, let me confirm the balance on the mortgage right now is about 266, you still occupy the property as your primary residence. Ask the questions that really make sense anything that's going to stop you right are you you know did you are you in the midst of any bankruptcies foreclosures right the distraits of the declarations yeah and then say did you do any hero loans or solar panel loans things that would come up and so if it says no and i got a straight path and say okay cool so that makes it super easy now i have a reason to trigger that so oh yeah then this is going to be super easy the reason being is because we're an automatic lender right now you start going into the process because you figured out has the pillars to even earn your time mm -hmm. when we when we have this, let's say, three-hour block where all we're doing is mining data, then sometimes we can get lost in the data. Yeah. Not only that, but then it becomes redundant. Yeah. And if we're mining all this data, and it's okay, you're not the only one. Yeah. Right? Some, <clears throat> sometimes, it just because it's like, I want that one, I want that one, ooh, ooh. You know, and it becomes hoarding. Where if we know how to get to this bucket, let's just keep that logistics to ourselves and say, okay, from this bucket, though, I'm going to look for 10. Today, I need 10, okay. right? And sometimes these 10, you're not going to contact, meaning that you're not actually going to get on the phone. But because you're sending an email, a text, and a voice message, they're bound to respond to one. Yeah. And if it doesn't, then that's fine. Let it get, let it get swept, right? Because all you're doing is, is, is touching base and you're hoping to catch them on a drip. And so if, if, I, if I bucketed, let's say, a lead source of just straight VA loans, and, and I, I labeled the bucket VA cash out, and it was all with regards to this campaign. So everything from my GoGo -Go dial campaign is going to say VA cash out and VA cash out script. So the VA cash out script would be like, you know, um, hey, this is Daniel. Just sent over an email and a voice message. Let me know when's good to talk. 949-267-2144. Very, very vague, right? But it's yeah. also letting them know that I have their email and their, and their cell phone. Okay. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I just sent the email and sent. I'll send over a text if I don't hear from you. I apologize. I forgot to add in. If I don't hear from you today, I'll give you a call again later. Okay. Right. And so whether they reply back on text, which most of them will, um, you're getting the dialogue open. But let's say if they don't have authorization to give them a text, then say, hey, I just sent over an email. Let me know when you get it. If I don't hear back from you, I'll call you again later tonight or tomorrow morning. Okay. Right. And then, um, so a lot of times I'll answer for an email and say, hey, what is this with regards to? And, um, and I got that template that I think I sent you. It's the one that says Happy New Year. Yeah. So I just take off the Happy New Year and saying, hey, we, as promised, we're just contacting those that we've met with or worked with in your community. And it has to do with regards to the time coming. As promised, we'd share with you any updates that enables you to improve your situation, right? And so it says, okay, cool. Let me go. Um, the response is... Uh, you know, I know it says entitled to, right? So I'll send out your complimentary report. If you do send that to an outbound, what they're going to ask for, well, what's a complimentary report? The complimentary report is the one where it's actually lender paid, closing costs. So we have that automatically because we have such a high amount of volume in your county. We're, we're, your county, we're the preferred lending institution because we simply offer homeowners like yourself a direct path, a direct plug to the source and what that means Jeremiah is that it actually helps you avoid broker points so you know this is how you're actually selling it but yeah. you're selling it like it's just inside value insider information right okay
Whereas sometimes the way it's being presented is like, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. We're number one. We do $5 billion a month. And, and it's too much of a tap dance. And so you want to do it to people who are only worth your time. Okay. So my biggest recommendation is that, is that you start off on the formula. You know, the 10, the 10 contacts. Of the 10 contacts, ideally you connect with five of them. Five of them where you can determine even if you're pointing it, like farming it down the line, inactivating it, or you're presenting it within the next 24 to 48 hours. Eventually, you'll, you'll catch three, four presentations in a day if you just keep up that momentum. Mm -hmm. But it makes it easier to manage and say, okay, well, I don't need to, you know, however many calls I need to make. And, and most of these will be outbounds, right? Because you're already hoarding it. And so now it's your opportunity to work on your outbound skill. And so now the outbound is not necessarily an outbound. Why it's, why it's kind of looked down upon is because you're like, well, these people are not going to want to buy. They're not going to want to buy if you ask them to buy. But if you say, hey, I got value for you first. Let me go and bring in according to an idea. They'll buy the idea. It just mm -hmm. depends on how you present it. But if it's a, if it's a courtesy, you know, like a complimentary report or, or a uh, real cool report that we're offering homeowners in, in your area, it's um it, it went to your gmail account you're reading it off the bv right it went to this gmail account is that still valid okay cool i never got a response back from you all you're doing is naming things that's familiar to them and so they're giving you more trust they don't know it yeah right okay cool this guy knows me yeah if someone nailed my email i'm like okay well apparently i gave it to him right yeah um and so those little things will buy you trust right in the first engagement but that just creaks the door open so you put your foot in Right and say, okay, cool. Well, now I'm in here. Let me ask you a few questions, yeah. and then you kind of open them up. So now you're going to identify if this person has a need. If they don't have a need, we're talking to Mr. Smith with 3.625 30 year fix, and he got it six years ago. No debt, no equity. I'm just finding out if he's going to retire soon. Cash out? No. Then I'm farming him, putting him out of way, or maybe even inactivating him. Then I'm moving on to the next. But that's one of my ten connections. Okay. Right. So I've made it a connection. And the reason why I say 10 new connections is because of those 10 new connections, you're only going to probably net five of those five. You're going to find out you probably only pitch two, but of those two, my goal is to help you convert, if not both, one of them. Okay. Right. And so now it dummies it down where you're not necessarily having to juggle so much because there will be active leads. Uh, like people that you've been working with, thinking it around, kicking it around, right? And say, Hey, call me here. Let me know this. But usually right now, we should be able to identify who's worth our calendar. Mm -hmm. And because we have so much open time with the slowdown in business, I would still say active, but farm out and carve out a time where you're going to outbound at least five people and, and using that message and saying, hey, I got, I got this real cool report for you. Um, I sent it over to your Gmail account. And is that your correct email? Got it. Never received a response. So I'll go and resend it again. It's going to have your street address in the subject line. Hey, well, I got you on the phone. Let me ask you. Now this is your way to get in, okay. right? So it went from a cold call to a confirmation. I think that's why it's powerful. And, yeah. and what happens is you're going you're gonna to find <clears throat> that of those 10, eight of them are, are living beyond their means. They're going to have debt. Yeah. But of those eight, you're probably only going to be able to talk to five. Of those five, only three of them are going to move, right? So if, it find, if you find out that you're getting more favor with this particular lead source, like, oh man, I'm just smashing this lead source, then go into Shark Tank and pull up just straight that lead source or go to Encompass and pull straight up that lead source. Mm -hmm. Look for funded loans under that lead source. Okay. If you're noticing that you're having more fundings within a specific state, like, um, like oh man, these people in Florida love me, you know, probably because of the timing, right? Like yeah. the, us being in the West Coast. So consider those things. Yeah. Um, rather than kind of just taking any business and then shooting them down one specific line. Gotcha. But it's ultimately going to come now down to two two lines, right? Very two paths, or actually three. I'm sorry. So three paths. One, you don't qualify, or you don't no need, right? And then two um, is going to be conventional. Third is going to be government. And so if you're going down government, you already know there's only going to be so many paths. You're you're kind of quickly checking off your checklist, and if it looks like no deal, then cut the conversation. But the whole point was, I can still send them that cool complimentary report. Yeah. Job done, right? Yeah. So you don't, you're not married to them yet. All you're doing is just filling them out real quick. Okay, cool. You're on your way. Here's your cool complimentary report. So the complimentary report, this this uh, profile report is actually what it's called. It all it all it allowed us to do is was have a water break, right? Like it just all it is is just kind of 
Um, it's called the water breaker, right? Icebreaker. Icebreaker. There you go. I was like, man, that doesn't sound right, dude. I'm thinking of like a pregnant lady or something like that. <laughs> I'm a water breaker. Um, but you get what I mean, yeah. right? So it just kind of becomes like an opener. Okay. So if you look at it that way, then the whole market's open to you. Yeah. Right? Because it, it actually acts now as our key to bring up serious shit. Like straight to the point. How, when else would you be able to um, ask someone and say, hey, let me look at your credit card debt. How much in credit card debt do you owe? Yeah. Now is the whole reason is to get this cool report. But the question is now, Daniel, what if they say, um, hey, what the fuck does that have to matter? Right? What does that got to do with anything? Yeah. Then what it has to do with is, is basically just saying, well, because of, of the way this report's set up, it actually can show you what options you have if you decided to combine that debt. Because what's happening is those credit cards are tied to rates that are increasing. So this is actually taking away from your net income. So if you want to use it, it's up to you, but it's going to be part of the report. It's really neat. I'll show you. How much are you sending on this credit card debt? Does that make sense? Yeah. So you, you answered it and then built up the suspense. Watch. I'll show you. And then go right back to the application. You see? Gotcha. So, so if it turns out that, that most, like most homeowners have got about 20 grand in the credit card debt, then we're asking about other things. Like, do you, are you paying your kids tuition? Are, do you have kids? You know, it's like, yeah, I got three kids. Got it. Child care, daycare, right? Um, after school activities. These are things that are not on the credit report. And say if they say they spend about $200, $300 a month, now I have a, a whole new reason. Instead of saying, hey, instead of, instead of me saying, I can save you a hundred bucks, I guess, now I could say, I've, I've now just paid for your, your kids after school activities for the year. Yeah. Right? Now it's like, oh, because it's always that one bill. <laughs> right? And now, now they're doing it for something else besides a hundred bucks. Gotcha. They're doing it for their kids. Gotcha. Yeah. So, okay. but that's just digging deep and trying to find out a situation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I think what just kind of being observant from, from looking in, it's really just spending time where there's a lot of moving parts because you're filtering and you're going through these different systems just to find this one contact yeah. and then putting it in this bucket. Yeah. So you're taking a lot of time in, in filling up your buckets, but now it's a matter of actually just, just figuring out why we're filling up in this particular area. Yeah. Right? So you, you, um, your outgo or out, output will probably just need to be increased. You just okay. need to get in front of more people. But if it comes down to a point where you're pitching people, but they're not buying, then it's a different story. Yeah. Right? It might be because the way we're setting them up or how we perceive was what valuable yeah. to them. Right? So yeah. it, really, it really comes down to kind of just hearing them out. Okay. Um, and, then, and then being open enough to where you, whether it's an eight-year Fannie ICANN or, you know, a New American ICANN mortgage or it's a, a first and second. Right? It's just going to be depending on what their goal is. And all we're going to do is figure out of the programs we have available, how do we make that result? Okay. Right. But and and during this conversation, they're going to say, "Well, you know, I'm only looking for this, right? You know, I only want this, right?" And our response is, "Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to send it to you. Watch." And then go yeah, right yeah. back into the process. Yeah. Right. Because what happens is on that second call, why I think it works so great is because it's just an idea. Like, hey, I was going to send it out to you, right? But I thought of something. I want to send this out to you. Now it allows you to disclose whatever you have as an idea. Yeah. Right. Even if it goes south, because then you're saying, okay, well, I'll go ahead and disclose the idea that I had, you know, just so that way you can see it in writing. They'll never bring up the the next, the last option, okay. because you made it sound it made it made so much sense, right? And even if we're raising their rate and they only need five grand in cash out, you can show them how to do that just doing a rate and term refinance because they're getting the payment deferral plus a That's you know right. escrow refund, right? But then the question is, well, why am I going to increase my interest rate? Well, you would do it because you would just shorten the life of your loan, right? And if, yeah. their, if their total income where now that five grand or six grand pays off credit card debts, then we can create monthly cash flow and give them more tax incentive um, to write off the interest on their home. Mm. Um, and depending on what their goal is, if you showed them how to cut five years off their loan, it's going to be somewhere in the ballpark of a hundred grand. So I'm gonna save you hundred thousand dollars by going this route. A lot of times, when you sell them just on the payment, they don't care about the rate, right? And so, like when you brought up earlier, at the very end, like they like the idea, they like the benefit, but they're asking, well, what's the rate? What's the rate? You know, you definitely still want to answer it. You know, say, well, at the payment that you selected, it's gonna be a four point seven five. Just throw it out there. Say, I'm actually gonna go and release it. The reason why is because you don't want the tonality to sound like you're hiding something. 
Okay. Right? Well, yeah, yeah, let me show it to you, but you're not answering it. Then yeah. they're going to be more suspect to look at it when it does come out. Okay. And it'll give them reason to put two and two together. Oh, okay. that's why he didn't want to say it. Got it. No matter how good the benefit is, right? Got it. Okay. So I should just be upfront with it. And even if it's at 5.75, because the way the idea was set up typically is a short term plan anyway, right? It's like getting cash out, do home improvements, we'll refinance again, put you on a shorter term, right? Or do cash out, refinance, get the payment deferral, pay off these credit cards, do refinance again 12 months, we'll put you on your last refinance. It's always a stepping stone. Gotcha. And that helps you sell the higher interest rate because there's a plan for it already. Right, and their plan is to show them how to get that payment and get that amount of savings. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, but it'll, it'll probably help with the follow through. Yeah, on how to um, build the excitement. Yeah, are you having any issues with that? Like um, getting getting them on the phone. What do you do? I think well, what you've been telling me has been fine, but it just feels honestly, I feel like I haven't had any swings. You know what I mean? It just feels like with all the the cue calls, we're just very like, you know, hey. I got a plan for HELOC. I got no first. I got excellent credit. Tell me what the HELOC is or I'm not moving forward. And I did with a couple of them that sound just like that. Hey, you know what? I can absolutely do that. What I can do is I have to run it through our automated underwriting system to make sure we're qualified for it, which I can get that information back to you, you know, within within an hour or so, you know. So then I'll go that route until I get all the information and see if I can try to pitch something else. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, hey, you know what? I ran it through, but unfortunately didn't qualify for a line of credit. And here's why. Chop it up then. Let's say yeah. take take five or however many you can from the dialer. Yeah. And then take five from the bucket. Okay. Right? To create your daily ten contact. Yeah. And that way you're not feeling like, you know, let's say you only grab three from the dialer, which I doubt, because now there will be increase, right? Yeah. So even if you grab X amount from the dialer, you're now doing what's called split testing. So you're seeing that this source netted you this much in business, yeah. and then this source netted you this much in business. Okay. So you're actually comparing it. But why you want to do it that way is because if you only get three in this route, you can easily take seven from here, okay. right? The only reason why this is a challenge is because sometimes we don't know how to open it up. And so that's why learning about the property profile report, now we have a reason to open it up. Yeah. No one would turn that call down because it was already on its way. All we're doing is confirming the email. Right, yeah. and we want them to ask, well, what's this regarding? Well, it's regarding the 2018 tax reform. Since we do a large volume of business in your area, we're actually doing a courtesy notification to you because we, it looks like we did business with you, right? And now he's like, oh, okay, cool, go ahead and send it. Hey, well, I got you on the phone. That's your foot in to do the application. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Now it opens up the entire database to me. Yeah. Now I can nitpick. Now I got reason to give him a call because what will happen is even if I find out I can't help this guy. I could still send them the property profile report and back out the file. It was just a click of a button. Now it was just a quick, quick introduction, interview. You're either going to go this way or that way, right? Hopefully it's this way because it's going to be to the bucket. But what you're doing is you're trying to fulfill your five contacts. Like this is worth my time. These are the five um, out of the ten contacts. These are the five that I can make a deal with, right? And then, and then from those five, ideally you could pitch X amount from them and then flip X amount. But all you're doing is just breaking it down to a daily cycle. Okay. Every single day you're looking for two. And okay. of course, there are going to be other things that pop up like fires in process. Just learn from it, delegate, and move on. Okay. Move on to the next. Cool. Cool? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good, Helpful? Man. Yeah. 